Hello and welcome to another week of our Middle School Ministry Weekend Service videos. I am glad you're here. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Megan and I have the privilege of being on staff for our Middle School Ministry team at Calvary. Um, and if you don't know me, you may not be familiar with our um, videos, so I'll just give you the quick rundown. We usually start off with a game followed by scripture and prayer. Then we move into a time of worship followed by um, a message. And this week we get to have our own Jacob Ziegler um, teaching and we're really excited to hear what God has to say. Jacob is a great guy, a man after God's own heart and um, we are just excited to hear, hear how God moves in him. So stay tuned for that. Um, like I mentioned last week, we are still ironing out some details in how we can meet together in person finally in the fall. So um, keep a lookout for any emails, anything like that. It should be getting to you soon um, because we miss you guys and we just cannot wait to be back together again. We're thankful for the online resources and we will continue to do this as long as possible. But if we can meet on campus, we're going to, and that's what we're trying, trying to figure out. So look out for that email. And in the meantime, enjoy the video. Hello, and welcome to another week of our kind of like taste tester challenges. Um, right. The name keeps changing every single week. What's uh, our name this week, Megan? This week, we are participating in a Carbonated Corona Challenge? That's right. Carbonated Corona Challenge. Yep, we're excited. So as the name suggests, we are going to be tasting different um, carbonated waters. Okay. It is, it is going to be wild. It's going to be exciting. And as you can see, um, we, we cannot. <laughs> no, we cannot see. Um, in honor of Connor, we are having our blindfolds on. And Kayla, do we need them? Um, I don't think so. I think no. all water kind of looks the same, right? Yeah. We do not need these at all. Not even a little bit. And yet, here we are. Here we are. Makes it more fun. Yeah, it does. Now we're in the dark. <laughs> Completely in the dark. Oh. Um, Lauren, you are wonderfully helping us today. Would you read off um, our... our uh... Yeah, yep, I can do that. <laughs> yep. Um, all right, from the background, and in no particular order... Um, we have Pellegrino, right? Um, we have First Street Sparkling Mineral Water. We have Lime Bubbly, little lime in there. We have LaCroix, and we have Spindrift Sparkling Water Flavor Lime. Wow! So, so three of them will just be plain sparkling water, no flavor. Yes, yes. And then two of them will have lime. And we have to guess the brand. Yeah. We Let's have to do this. <laughs> We're gonna go into our first round. As you can see, there's some. There's as you can see, but we cannot. There is a cup in front of us. Each of us. Okay, here it is. Cheers. Um, cheers. All right. Uh, refreshing. Megan, how are you feeling? <laughs> I am really nervous. <laughs> I am nervous for how the rest of this challenge is gonna go, but yeah, this, I am here for it. <laughs> this is gonna be hard, but I feel okay. like I feel like I have maybe a guess. I have an inkling. How would you rate this one out of ten? You know, it's refreshing, and it's not too bubbly. Right, it's just I the agree. Right amount of I agree. That's very valid. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give it like six and a half. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd give it like a seven. It's okay. already. I feel like I would drink this. Great. Right. Should we go for it? I think we should. Lauren, right. would you count us down from three? Yes, I would love to. Three, two, one. Spin drift. Oh, God. Oh, man. Ooh. Already died. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we can't. We can't. We're not going to go back. We're not going to go no. back. We're going to. We're not going to. There's no going back, guns. Megan. There's no going back. All right, you guys, this is round two. Um, I really have no idea how this is going to go because I None. don't know what the differences are. No. But this is fun and I really love sparkling water so I feel like I'm like at a spa right now. I'm just enjoying different waters. We should have put cucumbers over our eyes. Oh, dang it. Our blindfolds. That could have been our blindfold, the cucumbers. Yeah, That's we okay. could have just like taped them to our eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Okay. Let's, let's, oop. 
Let's do this. Those are those are glasses. Here it is. Okay. I had not a single bubble. What would you rate this, Kayla? Given that I didn't feel any carbonate carbonation, <laughs> and this is a carbonated challenge, I feel like I'm giving it a four. Yeah, I was thinking three. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Shall we do it? Let's. A three. Two, one. It's a carbonated water spring spring thing. <laughs> what's the, what's the that was thing? none of them. <laughs> All right, so either. both of you are in agreement. <laughs> you think you <laughs> you think that it is First Street sparkling miner, mineral water. Yeah, first Street sparkling mineral water. Got it. Okay. Yes. All done for All round done. two. All right, round. Are you ready for round three? I'm ready. Let's, let's take a step. Let's do this. Oh, there it is. All right. Oh! That's tart! That's tart! That made my salivary glance. Salivary <laughs> glance, like, pew, pew. Pew, pew. What does what does like, that mean? You know, like, so I was like, pew, pew, coming out pew, pew, of my pew, glance. Pew. Yeah, it's that's like I ate like a lemon. Like I just like bit into a lemon. I think I know which one this is. I want to go back now. I feel like oh, I should no. switch my answer. I feel like dark. I would rate this. I like a seven and a half. I actually really like oh. how bright it is. Kind of tastes okay. like sunshine in my mouth. Yeah, so I was gonna give it a five. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> Three, two, one. Spin drift. And here is why I think hey. so. I work at Trader Joe's, and every time I've had a spin drift, it tastes so like wholesome and like the real fruit mm -hmm. is inside the water. And that's what this tastes like, I feel. All right. Spin drift. We are of one mind. Yay! Here we go. We are on to round four. I have a slight fear that I'm going to need to burp at some point on this video, <laughs> and that's going to be very embarrassing. I'll try to be as discreet as possible. Oh, well, I'm, you're, you're in good company. <laughs> no shame, no shame. No shame. All, All right. Functions. Round four. All right, so what would you rank this one? Um, I almost feel like it's slightly salty. I would give it like a... If this were carbonated, I would give it like an eight. I feel like okay. this tastes like a classic sparkly mineral water. Weird. I would give this a four. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm not that impressed. Yep. <laughs> Our palates are, we have different reasons for being impressed by water. We do, it. we do, but I like it. Differences like it. are good things. That's what makes it beautiful. Differences are good things. Okay. Three, two, one. Pellegrino. Interesting, interesting. We are in our final round. That's right. Wow. I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I feel right. like the blindfolds, again, same as last week, I feel like they kind of give us an advantage. Like, it kind of helps us really just focus on the palette. And we like, are one with our senses. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think I'd rate this like a seven. Okay. What would you rate it? I think I'm giving it another eight. Oh. I like this one. And you're right, I think it tastes cleaner. I feel like this doesn't taste minerally, it just tastes like seltzer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Oh, Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. LaCroix. Mm -hmm. Man, wow. I even like fist bump. I know. You know? I'm trying. I don't know. Oh, I want. tried too? Oh, okay. No, I don't we're think it's work. We're probably not in sync on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to hear the results. Wow, Lauren. Yes. Do you want to uh, tell us how we did? I would love to tell you how you did. Um, I'm going to start off by saying you ladies did very, very, very well. <gasps> this you is did wild. very oh, yeah. well. Yes. All right. Number one oh, wow. was the only one with a bit of a discrepancy. That's right. Um, Sorry, guys. And the the answer to number one was lime bubbly. So Megan, Ooh. I believe you answered that correctly. Right wow. on, girl. Number two, First Street Sparkling Mineral Water, which That's is exactly right. what you guessed. Number three, 
Spindrift sparkling water, lime flavor, exactly what you guessed. Four, Pellegrino. Pat yourself on the back and five. My favorite seltzer water of all time. You got that. Five, of course, LaCroix. So Megan, 100% correct. The queen of the carbonated Corona Kayla also did very, very well. And I don't know how you both did that well. I don't know. How do you, how do you, like, I for sure, I for sure thought this was like impossible. <laughs> well, we love you. We miss you. Enjoy the rest of the video. We will see you next week. Bye guys. Hello. Uh, this weekend's scripture is from Joel 2, 12 through 13. Um, so grab your Bibles and read along with me. Joel 2, 12 through 13. This is why the Lord says, Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. All right, pray with me. Lord God, we just thank you for another weekend. We thank you for all the students and families who are currently listening. Lord God, we thank you um, for this resource that allows us to still communicate um, your word and your love for us, Lord. Um, I ask that you would just go before us uh, this week, that you would teach us something new, Lord God, and that you would really just meet us wherever we're at. Um, whatever we're feeling, whatever we're going through, Lord God, I just pray that you would, <clears throat> that you would be with us through it all, Lord God. We thank you that you are, that we know that you are, that we know that you will never leave us. Lord God, we love you and we give you all the praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Hey, middle school, just wanted to thank you guys for joining us for our weekend service. And um, yeah, if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and grab those. We're going to be in a few places and uh, we'll be continuing uh, talking about different spiritual disciplines, um, things that are going to help us grow in our faith, grow as believers, grow with one another, and ultimately with our relationship with the Lord. Um, so we're going to be in a few places. If you want to mark these out in your Bibles, we're going to be in um, Exodus and then we're going to be in Matthew. So the second chapter or the second book of the Bible um, in the Old Testament, Exodus, and then we're going to have the first book of the Bible in the New Testament. So beginnings of each uh, sections of the Bible. Um, but I just want to relate to you guys in a little bit of a sense of, I don't know for you guys, but I know a lot of holidays and like Thanksgiving, especially Christmas times for me, those are times when I am just the biggest napper ever. I just take naps all the time. I don't know what it is, but the rest of the year, not a nap guy. Thanksgiving comes around, I'm out on the couch. My family members catch me all the time. But what is it like after the Thanksgiving meal, you know, you have lunch or something or then you're moving into dinner, but there's always that nap time in between or Thanksgiving or Christmas day you eat or whatever. And there's that nap time after. What is it about food and being full physically that makes us so comfortable with anything falling asleep with other people puts us in a better mood what is it that food feeds to us physically that we get so comfortable in there's a sense of comfort after attachment to these these large meals that we have right um so i just oh, we're going to talk about a spiritual discipline um i don't know if you guys um have heard of it before maybe some of you have some of you haven't but we're going to talk about fasting so fasting is um it's probably pretty new for a lot of you guys. I know for me, when I was in middle school, it was a new, uh, it was a really new topic until um, eighth grade. I, I think that was what, the soonest I ever heard anyone mention it. And the, the, the soonest I actually learned about it and was taught about it was probably the beginning of high school. Um, and so we're going to, we're going to dive into fasting and um, we're just going to, yeah, we're going to go right into it. And we're going to, we're going to look at what is fasting as a whole. Um, so fasting, it's going to take us to our, our first text we're going to look at. It's going to be in Exodus and we're going to be in chapter 34, um, verse 28. Um, so if you know a little bit about Moses, Moses was this, um, this man in the old Testament had this great relationship with the Lord. One of the most godly men to ever live. Also, um, uh, if you know about him, received the 10 commandments from the Lord, um, on a mountaintop. And so. We're going to look about into uh, Exodus chapter 34, 28, and the passage goes like this. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenants, the Ten Commandments. So we see this, this, this piece of scripture. And this is Moses writing the Ten Commandments. But right before, it says two things. It's going to say that he was with the Lord and that for 40 days and 40 nights, he neither ate bread nor drank water. So we look at this and it seems so crazy. These, these are really big numbers, 40 days, 40 nights. Um, but this is a fast. This is a fast from Moses. So Moses fasted as he was receiving the covenant and the words of the covenant and the, that would later become that he would write down the Ten Commandments. So if you grow up in church, you know the significance of the Ten Commandments. You know that they're significantly used in the Old Testament um, and throughout the Bible and in our faith um, come up all the time. But there's something about Moses as he's writing the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, and something right before that is that he doesn't have any food or water in him, that the Lord thought that it would be better for Moses to fast 
to be in this time receiving without anything in his physical body, um, bringing him these, this, this sense of, uh, physical well being. He was, he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And so we're going to talk about fasting, like I mentioned earlier, um, but fasting, you can clearly and pretty simply define this as just a period of time that you can consciously step into where you don't eat food for a specific time. Um, and in the Bible, we can see that it's paired with not drinking water like this text, this, um, this text shows us, but most of the time it's just going to be with a period of time without food. Um, so we go into this and this, this kind of brings up some questions. What does this look like? What we just don't eat for 10 minutes, two hours. What does it look like? Um, but fasting, um, normally goes throughout the period of time for a day or multiple days or multiple long periods of time. Um, and so fasting is this really interesting concept of we, we're, we're, not allowing ourselves the comfort of food that we talked about, the comfort of water or, or whatever it is eating. And, and we're not allowing our bodies this comfort, but we're trying to draw closer to the Lord. So fasting and prayer are always combined one another with each other. Fasting is an, is an effort to pair your prayer life and strengthen this. Fasting can bring you a stronger sense of prayer with the Lord. Um, so fasting helps in, in a broad sense of, of things with your spiritual life. And that's why it's a spiritual discipline, but fasting plainly and clearly is a period of time where you don't eat or drink. Um, in the Bible, it shows a lot about drink, not drinking, but in today's day, uh, multiple fasts kind of just go revolving just around food. Um, so we're going to get into why do we fast? Why is this important? Why, why? as believers, do we need to do this? Is it a spiritual discipline, something that we work on, that we grow in as we grow with the Lord? Um, and we're going to, we're going to look at our second chapter. We're going to look at our, um, not the second chapter, but our second passage. This is going to be a Matthew, like I referenced earlier. So if you want to hop to Matthew chapter four, that's, where we're going to be in our next, our next passage. And so we're, this is going to be, um, the first and second verses. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So we see, we see these, these large numbers again, come up 40 days, 40 nights. And we, we see that this is kind of like a daunting thing. Jesus is going up into the wilderness, it says. He was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So this this is a, it can be broken down into a lot of things and a lot of different reasons as to why Jesus did this. But the main thing that we wanna look at is this is the beginning of Jesus's ministry. This time when he was teaching, performing miracles, going out and about in cities. This is one of the beginning sections and stories in Jesus's life. He goes into the wilderness and he's fasting for 40 days, 40 nights. And it says he was hungry. And we just want to look up as to why we fast. This is the question. Why, why do we need to fast, right? Why is it so important for us to fast? And I think in the beginning of this, of this, this passage, it says that Jesus was led up by the spirit. This says a lot about where Jesus was going and what he was doing. He was fasting, but he was also praying. He was spending time with the Lord. And in this, he was being tempted. Um, and so we look as fasting as a spiritual, a spiritual discipline and something that we do spiritually. Fasting is what we, we can use to kind of grow our relationship with the Lord. Um, fasting, like we said, strengthens our prayer life. Um, fasting, I know for a lot of people is used when they have really difficult decisions coming up in their life. They have really difficult times that they're going through. They might be going through some big decisions in their life where they, they're moving away or they're deciding on a college to go to, or there's, there's a lot of practical reasons why we can fast, but there's a, there's a deeper underlying reason why we fast. And so we look at this and there's, Jesus was being prepared for something. He was being prepared for a temptation. 
um, and he fasted 40 days and 40 nights before. So fasting is important to us, guys. It is, it is really important because we look at times in the Bible and it's preparation times that fasting precedes something and that after that it's, 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 it's difficult. And it's, it's something that's hard that draws a lot out of us. And normally this is, this is something that we would think the opposite about. We would think, well, we need to, we, we need to be like in the best physical shape and form and we need to be all new with the best nutrients and food. Um, but the Bible tells us opposite. The Bible tells us and shows us multiple instances where these, these people, these men of God, they had multiple big decisions or big moments in their life where they fasted right before. So we're going to bring a couple ideas to you of why we fast. We fast because it strengthens our prayer life. We fast because we want to grow closer to the Lord. So we strengthen our prayer and we want to grow closer to the Lord. And another reason is because we are disciplining our faith and we're growing closer to the Lord, but also we're going in a more spiritual area of our life where we start to not just bring God with us to other areas of our life, but we bring other areas of our life into us with God. And so that's why we fast. We fast because it is something that feeds our spirit, that feeds our prayer life. It feeds the necessity that we have to cling to the Lord and to cling to the Lord in hard times when there's big decisions. You might be thinking about something that's going on in your life that's really that's really hurting you or it's it's hard on you. So that's why we fast. And we're going to look at another scripture in Matthew in just a second. So if you want to turn that while you have your Bibles open, it's going to be Matthew chapter 6. Um, so that's that. But we're going to look at just some practical ways that you guys can fast. Um, and obviously, I want you guys to know that we don't fast to earn God's love. We don't fast to earn God's grace. We don't fast to earn God's mercy. These things that are freely given to us by the gospel of the, the good news of the Bible, the gospel, we don't have to earn. We don't have to earn. And it's not of us that we earn these things. And fasting is something that we don't use to earn God's love. We don't use to earn God's attention. We don't use to earn God's grace and mercy in our lives. Fasting is something that helps us grow in our lives. It helps us recognize God's grace, helps us recognize God's love, helps us reveal these things, but it's, not, it's never to earn these things. So I just want to make that clear. That's, that's, that's another reason, but we're also going to jump into the practicality of, of fasting and what that can look like in your guys' lives. And I think something that's helped me out a ton um, just with practicality and starting fasting, because fasting can seem like a daunting thing in the beginning. Most of our lives, we, we, we don't spend fasting. Um, so something practical that I've known that I've helped is to pick a two meal period a two meal period of when we choose that we're not going to eat food. Maybe that's breakfast and lunch or it's lunch and dinner. I think breakfast and lunch is a great period of fasting time that you can start off if you're in your spiritual, in this spiritual discipline of fasting where you wake up and you spend the morning, you spend the, the middle of the day fasting and in prayer and in the word and reading your Bibles. And then you take one meal at the end of the day, scripture, um, paired with scripture and paired with prayer. Also just completing your day with God, um, allowing one meal at the end of the day. And I think that's a great way to start. That's a great practical place that you can start fasting if you've never done this before. And I think um, as we grow and as we do this, we, we might spend a whole day fasting. We might do no meals for the entire day and we might, we might spend time in the word and in prayer throughout the whole day and replace our meals and our times of eating with prayer with um, reading the word, with spending time with God, um, with worship and other means of connecting with the Lord in a spiritual sense. So those are just some practical ways, but we want to go back to the scripture and we want to look at what Jesus says about fasting. This is a teaching that Jesus taught on fasting. So this is Matthew chapter six. Um, it's going to start in verse 16. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anointed, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, 
but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So Jesus is teaching this idea that fasting doesn't come in a public area. Fasting doesn't come in, in the, the street corners and seen by other people like the hypocrites is what they said. The fasting comes in secret with your father who is in secret. And that's talking about the God um, that lives in heaven and is watching over us, God, um, and watching over us. But um, this is what Jesus is teaching us about fasting. Fasting is a private and it's a secret. It's a secret time for us to grow in our spirit. So this is just some practical ways, some practical thoughts about fasting. Um, it's, it's in, it's in secret. Um, it's not in a secret sense that you don't tell anyone about it though. It's a secret sense as you spend time alone, you and God, and you spend some time fasting or in prayer or reading the word or worship as we talked about before. Um, this is what Jesus is trying to tell us. And so we see, uh, fasting is throughout the Bible and we see it in multiple areas. And so fasting, if this is still new to you, if you still don't really know, what you think about fasting, I, I just challenge you guys to spend some time in prayer about it. Spend some time reading your Bibles. Spend your time talking to your parents, definitely for your parents, and to pastors and people in position with our church or uh, wherever you, you are attending. If, if it's your tribe group, um, we, we challenge you guys to just bring up those conversations to start asking, hey, what would it look like? What, what advice do you have? What wisdom do you have for me? Uh, I've been really praying about fasting and I kind of want to start this. Um, so these are some practical ideas that you guys can, um, can bring up and start to pray about and start to think about as we, as we kind of grow in spiritual disciplines. So that's what we have for you guys today about fasting. And I'm just going to close with some prayer and, um, yeah. So God, we just thank you for fasting. God, we thank you for, um, this gift that you've given us. God, we thank you for the ability to fast, God, to spend time with you and to spend time with your spirit. God, we thank you for um, what your word says about fasting and the multiple um, moments in the Bible that you have put fasting um, before or after major decisions, God, and you've given us these moments to look back upon and to um, replicate and to walk after in our own lives. God, so we thank you and we love you and we um, we pray that we can start these conversations about these spiritual disciplines and we can grow in a relationship with you. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, yeah, we're continuing to pray for you guys and pray as you grow in these spiritual disciplines and walk in with the Lord. Hope you guys enjoyed this weekend's video and our message from Jacob Ziegler. So Jacob, thanks for teaching us. And as uh, I hope it's an encouragement and a challenge to you to think that we fast to strengthen our relationship with God and to grow closer to the Lord, not to earn love, like he said, but to, uh, to grow closer to him. And so uh, as you think about fasting, uh, I'm going to reiterate just one thing that he said of talk to your parents about it. So before, if you decide to fast for a meal or two, uh, please tell your parents that you've made that decision before um, skipping a meal so that they aren't concerned and trying to figure out what is going on um, and that they can maybe even uh, help you along with it or join you even. And so uh, help them even plan it out in advance so that your mom doesn't or somebody make you a good meal. And all of a sudden you say, I'm not going to do it. Connor said, don't eat me. <laughs> don't eat this meal. It's like, no, tell your parents. We want them to be uh, helping you in that process. And the other thing I'll say is tribes and in-person services. We will be back on campus soon. So I'm sending your parents an email this upcoming week. And in next weekend's video, I'll share with more detail what that is going to look like for us to be gathering again together. So love you guys. Can't wait to see you soon. And I hope you have a great day.